All right, hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to another Metastock webinar. We are so excited again, and as always, to have you here today with us. My name is Kelly Clement. I am your YouTube host today, and I am thrilled to have uh, with us today uh, Tyler Wood uh, discussing his institutional trend following investment strategies. So you're gonna learn some awesome uh, techniques uh, from, uh, from Tyler Wood. So we're, we're excited to have him here with us today. We're going to be getting started in about seven minutes, uh, but as you come into the room, tell us hello, tell us where you're coming in from, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. We're here in beautiful Salt Lake City, uh, having a wonderful day today, beautiful outside, staring at some lovely blue sky, uh, but I am thrilled to be learning more about uh, some institutional trend following strategies, so let's, uh, let's stay tuned for that. Now, if you are not familiar with Metastock, who we are, what we do, we are purveyors of technical analysis and charting software. So today, uh, I'm just going to show you a quick video before we get started about Metastock, who we are, and I'll be right back with you. Hi there, Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. As the marketing director, I get asked all the time, what is Metastock? How can I help my trades? Well, stick around for about three minutes and I'll tell you. Metastock is an award-winning software and data package that has been helping traders for over 35 years. Simply put, Metastock is a tool for traders like you to analyze the markets. Metastock helps you take the guesswork out of trading by offering a methodical, systematic approach to some key questions all traders come up against. Questions like, how do I decide which securities to trade when there are literally thousands to choose from? Which strategy should I use and how do I test that strategy before spending my first trading dollar? When should I enter and exit a trade? How can I effectively manage the securities I'm interested in? And of course, how do I know where prices will go next? At the core of Metastock are the power tools. The power tools give professional grade analysis tools to private traders like you and me. You can scan the market with the Metastock Explorer to filter and sort securities that show buy and sell signals based on your criteria. The Metastock System Tester lets you test most strategies through a process called backtesting which allows you to see how your strategy would have performed over time. You can easily manage and monitor the securities you are interested in with Quote Center. Quote Center lets you sort on a variety of criteria to view the data that's important to you. Then just double click on a security if you want to see its chart. With the Metastock Forecaster, you can even take advantage of patented technology to view probable future prices. If you're an options trader, you're going to love Metastock's OptionScope. OptionScope puts all the critical info at your fingertips, displaying sortable, customizable, color-coded options data, including the Greeks. And Metastock has solutions for traders of all levels and interests. If you're just getting into trading, you will appreciate the education offered by our many built-in systems. In addition to pointing out buy and sell signals, Metastock explains how they work in an easy-to-follow commentary window. Metastock has built-in systems based on popular strategies like MACD, Bollinger Bands, Turtle Trading, Candlesticks, and many more. Metastock even has the very popular and exclusive Rahul Mohindar Oscillator System, or simply known as the RMO. And as you become a more experienced trader, Metastock grows with you. Advanced analysts will enjoy the comprehensive list of trading systems and indicators and the ability to build their own systems. And if you're a day trader, you can't do better than Zenith, the real-time news, data, and analysis package offered by Refinitiv, a world leader in market data. Add on the world-class support and it's not hard to see why Metastock has won the Stocks and Commodities Reader's Choice Award for 26 consecutive years. To find out more about Metastock and how it can help your trading, visit metastock.com or contact a product professional via phone, email, or chat. All right, everybody, it looks like 
looks like we're about uh, two and a half minutes out. Uh, looks like we're uh, just about all set over on the presentation side. Uh, I've checked in on the audio, everything's looking good. So I think we'll be set to go here in about two minutes. Uh, in the meantime, if, uh, if you have not heard, we are actually running our Metastock spring event. So if you go to metastock.com, uh, you can actually save on just about any product uh, right now. If you just go to the Metastock homepage, click on it's a spring event, practically everything is on sale. Just click on that link right there. It will take you to our spring catalog and show you everything on sale. And you can even download the free e-catalog up here uh, to download that. So great sale going on if you haven't taken advantage of that go to metastock.com and just click on that homepage banner. Let me go ahead and go in and check with everybody, make sure we're good to go. I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, it is time. We are all set to go. Let's get, go ahead and get the show rolling. It is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Uh, just to let you know, 10 seconds, we're going live, or as soon as Kelly tells me. You could say right now, this very minute, that we're going to go live, and I'll stop reading the legal disclaimer. So uh, you should be able to hear me. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for coming today. Uh, it's good to see you. Uh, I hope you've been doing well in these uh, rather, and we're live. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Jeff Gibby with Metastock. I hope you're doing well today. I want to say thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us. Um, it's good to see you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to uh, read this legal disclaimer. So let's do that. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sub or other guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I do want to introduce two of our guests today, Alex Cole, Tyler Wood. We've had them on a number of times. Earlier this year, they, uh, they started to kind of uh, talk about a go no go systems that they had developed using um, it's kind of the terminology that they've adopted from NASA. They're great presenters. We're going to look at some charts today. They're going to talk a little bit about what they've worked on, and we're going to have a good time doing it. So let's go ahead and kind of bring everybody on board here. And then there's Alex, and then there's Tyler. And uh, I've got, turned on your microphones. Uh, I can see both of you. Tyler, you're the one that usually runs the slides, right? I should be turning I the first sure to you. That's right. Good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for having us, Jeff. Yeah, of course. It's good to have you. So there we go. I just sent the screens over to you. Perfect. We'll and see that, and we can see them. Excellent. Boy, look at that. Everything's working. It's, you'd think three years into a pandemic, we would uh, 
you know, we'd have no more technological difficulties in video conferencing, but they do arise sometimes. And all of our cameras are working today too. So that's a plus. Yeah. Bless. Okay, I'm going to get out of the way for a little bit. Um, I'll be, uh, I know that we're, my, we're maybe looking at some traps later. I'll get ready for that. In the meantime, you guys have the floor. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thanks, Kelly. And thanks to all of you uh, for tuning in. I know, uh, you know it's a wild time in the markets these days. And so take a deep breath. You're not trading right now. Uh, you're going to learn. So open your mind to that. Grab a cup of coffee, energy drink, cold, cold drink of whatever you choose. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is stuff that Alex and I learned working with institutional money managers. Uh, these are tools that have been built because of our understanding of their process, but also for them. And new this year, uh, we're bringing these to, uh, to all self-directed investors and traders. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, go, no, go, right? Couldn't be more simple than a, a shuttle launch. If you're thinking about NASA, uh, you want the conditions to be right so that you can be successful. And the same goes for trading. Uh, what we've found from our work with all those institutional folks is that uh, they have a really well-defined process. They're very disciplined in the tools that they look at and the checklists that they use, but they try to keep things very simple. And so that's what we're going to talk about, not predicting, not forecasting what the markets are going to do, but reacting responsibly through that discipline checklist. So again, I uh, really appreciate everybody joining us today and let's uh, let's go have some fun. Let's learn something. Today we're talking about trend following investment strategies and there are numerous really successful investors who've used this concept uh, to their advantage. John Henry is one that uh, you might be familiar with if you've ever read the book or seen the movie Moneyball. Now that book and movie are not about investing but it's about taking your behavioral biases out of the, in this case, selection process for Major League Baseball players. Uh, so he was the person behind Sabre Analytics, uh, the winning teams, the championship teams and the Boston Red Sox. Uh, he also owns the Boston Red Sox and the Liverpool Football Club and Roush Fenway Racing. He's been very successful in his career. But he started as a very humble soybean farmer, lived, on, lived in southern Illinois, uh, got into the commodities trade with his family's farm and started to realize that for a lot of investors, they're making mistakes because of their emotional bias, because of what they project or what they think will happen. So to implement his trend following strategy, he says, if you could take emotion, those would be, could be, should be ideas out of your process and look at what actually is happening, meaning price in the markets, and then also quantify what's going on, you'd have these huge advantages. And certainly he has had huge advantages and went on to, to manage the Boston College Foundation and, uh, excuse me, Boston University and, uh, and all the rest. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. What is it that makes these institutional investors so successful and i think for a lot of traders myself included where we start is is typically you know we've got to pick winning trades well all of the research that alex and i have gone through for years working at the cmt association alex uh, is actually a subject matter expert helps train people to get through these rigorous uh, financial services industry exams talks about how you could just from a coin flip uh have a successful money management practice 50-50 chance of whether or not it's a winning trade, as long as you pay attention to how you manage risk. Risk management is job one, two, and three. And to manage risk, you have to take some of these cognitive biases, some of these emotional problems out of your process. And we know, right? You can raise your hand. It's a webinar. Nobody can see you. Have you ever had a trade that then became an investment? Something that started to work against you, but you held on to it because you had this strong conviction that you knew it was coming back. Well, that's where people get into the risk of ruin. They blow up their accounts because it's very difficult to admit that we're wrong. We're human beings. I've made the exact same mistake. Uh, Alex has too. He won't admit it. He's too good looking. But we, we know that from, from all of the behavioral science research that we experience much more pain in the loss than we experience joy from the gain. So we put that into a trading context. When something is working out for you, you quickly lock in that profit, right? You wanna feel all that reward. Ah, it went up 10%. You close out that position and you captured that win. Well, what if that 10% was the first part of a 500% move? You don't know what's going to happen. And so the expectancy formula, and I apologize for getting a little mathematical right off the bat with you all tonight. Uh, but if you think about how you can break even with a trading system, it's the combination of winning trades, the percentage of winners, as well as your trading discipline. 
and the size or the profit ratio. So right here, that's the coin toss, right? 50-50. You're right half the time, you're wrong half the time. Well, you can be profitable as long as your winning positions outpace your losers two to one. And uh, I've talked to a lot of folks in the, in the Major League Baseball realm, and they said, you know, if you bat 300, you, you make it into the Hall of Fame, right? Career, career batting average, you're going to strike out 70% of the time. And that's what creates excellence, is that you deal with those losses, you don't let them get into your head, and you, uh, you hold on to your winners. So with Go No Go Charts, what we're going to talk about today are ways to improve your edge, ways to pick more winning trades, make sure that the probabilities are in your favor. But we're also going to talk about this trading discipline and how we can uh, just be simpler in our process so that we don't fall into those behavior traps. Alex, I know uh, this chart is, is one you love, one you've seen. Maybe even in your early days, you created charts like this. Talk to us a little bit about why this is a problem. <laughs> I'm not sure if I love this kind of chart or not, but uh, certainly familiar with them, um, working with uh, my own uh, analysis over the years and certainly now with clients. Um, you know, from any aspect, from, from big people entering the industry, trying to learn technicals, they put too many indicators on a chart and overwhelm their own uh, thought process, even though through to sell-side research analysts or sophisticated investors that um, have a very good disciplined process, but have a hard time then explaining it to the people that they need to explain it to because they've made the charts complicated. So we're both advocates of having a disciplined process, a checklist that we step through to arrive at a decision that allows us to feel confident in the trade that we make. But we tend to see this problem all over the place where we've overcomplicated the chart. And for Alex and I, and, uh, and I think most uh, folks who appreciate and practice technical analysis, uh, you have to understand trend. You have to understand momentum. There's volume and volatility that are critical components of your, of your trading discipline. And once you need to get a view of all four of those, for a lot of people, they're, they're looking for many, many indicators that help confirm what they're seeing uh, in that price trend. And that ends up with analysis paralysis. We know that a lot of indicators can be redundant, sometimes even contradictory. And when we get this much going on our charts, right, you put enough squiggly lines on there, you can convince yourself of whatever you want to believe. Oh, maybe I should stick with it. Maybe I should have more conviction in this trade. Or you get out of winning trades as soon as that trend trembles or consolidates. Uh, so we want to talk about being patient, disciplined investors. Alex, let's talk through, right? We're going to break down all four of those, trend, momentum, volume, and volatility. But let's start with the trend. And, and from all of our work with institutional folks, what have you learned that people use to identify when a trend starts and when it comes to an end? Yeah. What we've learned is that it's really the most important part of, of, our, of our discipline. If you can identify the trend, you can trade in the right direction. You can trade on the side of the trend. Um, and if you can do that, then you can profit on the majority of the move. And what we like to say is that this is simple. It's a simple concept. If this, <laughs> we talk about the TikTok video <laughs> from a <laughs> pandemic uh, explosion of TikTok investors where people said, yeah, I've got a great new strategy. I buy it when the line's going up and I sell it when the line's going down, right? It's simple concept, but it's yeah. not easy to do. Um, but if we can highlight the underlying trend, then we can understand in which direction we want to be trading. So what we'll do here real quick is just walk through an example process or an idea of how somebody might go about creating that disciplined checklist to identify trend. And what you're going to do is look for highs and lows. And there is an automated way to do this, which we use something like the Donchian channels. Those of you familiar with the turtle traders, you'll know what all of all of uh, all of them used as their entry point was based on the Donchian channels, which are just a uh, indicator that looks back at a set period to try to identify the highest high and highest low. And it plots that on the chart. And as the, the price moves up in its trend, then that highest high will keep moving. And when you see that line rising, you can say that you're in a trend. Um, that, that just goes a little bit further than visually identifying the highs and lows that you might start off doing. But then once you've done something like that, you might throw on another indicator like Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands is going to incorporate or encompass, sorry, 95% roughly of all of the data is going to fall within those two Bollinger Bands because it's two standard deviations away from the mean. So whenever prices outside of those Bollinger Bands, that's significant information. That's an important moment. So we might look at when price trades outside of a Bollinger Band, 
uh, we might consider trading in the direction of the break or the, the breakout of the Bollinger Band. And then we might throw a moving average on here. Moving averages are on every chart in the world almost, it seems. Um, we didn't even consider moving averages technical analysis when I was working in product of Bloomberg because it was just too common, too commonplace. Uh, we couldn't identify power technical analysts because moving averages are so prevalent. But if you throw a moving average on this chart now, you can see that somewhere on the left, sort of 20% of that chart, you're starting to see price break above a moving average. You're starting to see it break out of its Bollinger Bands. The Donchian channels are moving higher. So you're starting to think, okay, this is a bullish environment. We're making new, new highs. And then you might put something else on there as well um, to just sort of give you that, that extra sense of, of uh, confidence or that extra sense of what the market is telling you about the price action. You throw volume on a chart, you can sort of see, okay, is the market participating in the move that you're seeing in price? So if you're seeing price make a new high, are you seeing an accompanying rise in volume? And you see a little peak in volume, uh, just around the, the same sort of time. So you're thinking to yourself, we've got price above a moving average. We're breaking out of a Bollinger Band. Um, the Donchian channels are showing us new highs. Volume is fairly heavy compared to where it's been in the bars before. You could keep going, put something like the MACD on, which, which is a bit of a blend of momentum and trend, but it, it allows us to see the relative uh, action of a shorter term moving average to a longer term moving average and to see when that shorter exponential moving average is higher than the longer exponential moving average. We consider that a bullish environment. And it just tells us that prices in the short term are moving quicker than the average of prices over the long term. So at this point now, at the same sort of area, you've got MACD and its signal line crossing above zero. You start to stack up all the evidence, put the weight of the evidence in your favor. And you're starting to say at some point here, we'd be able to be feel confident recommending a bullish position in the stock. But what happens, hopefully you can see, is that the more you add, the harder it gets to see price, the harder it gets to see some key levels, supply and demand, market dynamics that are displayed in the price action. And you could, you know, you could keep going. We've, this is a very simple process, but we don't want to take up too much time. But you've seen charts with three or four or five oscillator panels, uh, three or four more concepts on the price panel itself. And before you know it, you're really struggling to see even something simple like a price breaking higher than a prior high. But we all need to see that kind of thing. And so we're, we are not uh, saying that these are not good indicators. They're, this is the basis upon which go no go charts are built, right? Sound, back-tested, widely used technical concepts. Uh, they're objective in their approach. But you can see how for any trader or investor, they, they have to understand the inner workings, the mathematics behind each one of these to know what it's telling you. And as Alex just pointed out, we're losing sight of the most important indicator of all, which is price. And we're gonna talk about that more in a minute. But what, what we came to as a solution, right? And thinking about how those uh, institutional research analysts, those money managers, how they are even communicating their investment ideas or how they are taking action on investment research, uh, it has to be a much simpler process than that. Uh, you, you still want the checklist. You want all of that information but not the noise, right? We want to separate that signal from the noise. So what you're seeing right now is a composite blend of much more information than was on the prior chart. There's more uh, input to a go-no-go -go chart and a lot of computation happening in the background, but it's simplified. It's custom weighted so that we understand when the trend begins and we understand when the trend comes to an end. So quick refresher for those of you who haven't seen anything from go-no-go -go charts before, what we're looking at in these color-coded bars when they are in blue or even this light aqua, all of the weight of the evidence, that whole checklist is telling us that we have a, a an upward trending condition. It's a go. Your investment thesis is, you know, the market agrees with you. It's time to enter that trade. We also know that when they're in pink and purple bars, that means all of those inputs are signaling a downward trend. It is bearish. We want to get out of any trades that we're holding when it enters those uh, very bearish conditions. And then we've built some sensitivity into the model so that you can see in places where price consolidates or even corrects, but it doesn't lose trend. So when we talked earlier, we, we wanna hold those winners, we wanna be patient investors. So sticking with a trade to the upside is just as difficult as the risk management of getting out when it's time. Last thing I wanna point out are these amber bars. That's when all of the weight of the evidence is in its neutral position. All of the readings are saying, 
market is directionless right here. There's a, there's a tug of war between buyers and sellers. We're not trending in one direction or the other. And Alex and I are both uh, you know, just huge fans of the life and work of Jesse Livermore. He was very famously quoted as saying, there's a time to go long, a time to go short, and a time to just go fishing. So you've got go bars, no go bars, and go fish bars. It's as simple as that, right? The concept of trend is as simple as that. And the fact is, Alex and I are so proud of this work, and we, we have seen how effective it is with all of our institutional clients, and it's been available to them for, for much longer, uh, we wanna give it away for free. So for everybody who's on this webinar, or if you're watching on YouTube at a later date, uh, you can go into Metastock and you can apply this template for free. Just take a look at GoNoGo -Go Trend, and all that we would ask is you let us know how it's working for you. What are you trading? What's your time period? What's your wh What kind of securities are you looking at? How has that helped you become a more disciplined or rule-based trader? All right, now we talked about price is so important, right? We, we have to eliminate all of that extra analysis paralysis, remove the other indicators and all the squiggly lines from our chart so that we can see price. The reason that Alex and I believe this to be the truth is that Markets trend because of fundamental information. And fundamentals, uh, God bless everyone who studied accounting and wants to pour over 10K statements from corporate America and listen in on uh, conference calls for earnings reporting. The market is the greatest fundamental investor that we've ever met, right? It picks winners and losers very, very well. In fact, the S&P 500 is a great trend following system. Now. Folks like Mark Abraham have said that ultimately it's the dollar-weighted collective opinion of all market participants that determines whether a stock goes up or down. Let's break that apart for a second. Think about supply and demand, right? When, when there is more demand for something at a fixed rate of supply, it's going to drive that price up. And so we want to see that behavior play out in the markets, and that is reflected, that consensus is revealed by analyzing price. That's our most important indicator. And if we obscure that with too many lines on our charts, we're gonna lose sight of that very important price action. All right, so we've talked about blue and aqua. Those are our go trend colors, strong and weak form. Amber bars are neutral. Pink is the weak form and purple is the strong form of bearish conditions or downward no-go trends. So let's just look at a couple charts together. Uh, Alex, walk us through this one. Yeah. Yep. So we're gonna go through the, the S&P with a few charts. Um, this is the daily chart of the S&P using the uh, SPY, the ETF, the tradable instrument. Um, and this, you can see, it's very simple. It's a weak no-go. So the, the weight of the evidence is that we're still in a no-go trend. Now we had a strong rally to end last week. This week we're struggling to go higher and today was a, uh, this was um, about lunchtime. Uh, you could see that the markets were headed lower. Um, but we're in a, a weak no-go trend on the daily chart. So we know that bear market rallies are very tempting, right? You've, you've been in the interview room with the bad cop through all this damage. Good cop comes in and you want to give him your confession, right? You really want that bearish phase to be over and uh, to be back into uh, bullish territory. That's why so many investors get caught up in relief rallies. So when we think about this, again, on the daily time frame only, your time frame might be much shorter than this, in which case you'd be seeing, and we're going to look at this in just a second, if, if you're trading intraday, you would have captured a big part of this upward move. But on a daily basis, we're thinking about a little longer term investor, you don't want to get caught up in these relief rallies and the no-go, it weakened, but it, it continued to show you that the weight of the evidence is still further downside. Um, so let's talk about multiple time frames, Alex. Yeah. When, when you and I studied for the through the CMT program, uh, and again, that stands for Chartered Market Technician. Uh, I've been working with the CMT Association for over a decade, uh, and Alex and I have, have really dedicated a lot of our work together, even before this company, just to educating folks around technical analysis. So we, we can't give a technical analysis talk without referring to Charles H. Dow, it's the, the father of modern technical analysis, also the founder of the Wall Street Journal, the Dow Jones Indices, you name it. And he was a very nautical man and he observed the behavior of investors and he said that trends happen over multiple time periods. So if you consider the primary trend, here we're talking about very long-term, things that are influenced by gross domestic product. Are we in an expansionary economy or recessionary? The fundamentals of the underlying companies, our transports confirming what we're seeing from the industrials, our products just being uh, manufactured or are they also being shipped to consumers? That's the primary trend. 
And he said, Those are, that's like the tide of the ocean. It's unflappable. Then he said, there's a secondary trend. And that secondary period is the reaction of all of us investors to that information, right? Economic and fundamental data comes out so slowly, you see a lot of fluctuation in this secondary trend. He said, that's like the waves of the ocean, right? It, it escalates above and comes back below that primary trend. A lot of technical analysts have found a sweet spot trading with these uh, secondary trends, knowing what the underlying bias of the market is. And you can look for those mean reverting opportunities. And then there's the minor period or the shortest term trend. And there you're seeing the you know, reaction to news of the day, short term intraday moves. But again, they stick with, they undulate above and below the secondary trend. So if we consider this multiple time frame perspective, everybody on the line today, if you're gonna take something away, maybe your time frame is intraday, fantastic. But make sure you step back and reflect on longer term charts, right? When in doubt, zoom out. What is the underlying bias of the market? And what we just showed you on that daily go, no go chart is that we still have a weak no go condition on a daily time frame. So if you are a uh, shorter term investing in that upside move, just know that that's a trade, it's not an investment and that the downward bias is still in place. So Alex, if we were to look at a two hour chart, uh, we would see uh, what, what's on screen right here and, and we're in a weak go. So talk to us a little bit about uh, what this means two hour versus the daily chart. Yeah, so it's a, it, this is what we're talking about with multi time frame analysis and it's so powerful. Um, there's a lot of systems that have been written um, using different indicators to really ca capitalize on this idea. Let's say that your time horizon for investing is the daily chart. You want to know what's happening on the larger time frame chart as well, right? Right now, the weekly chart is a strong no go. So we know that the larger time frame trend is a no go, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we also know that the daily is a no go, but a weak no go. We've seen that relief rally that you were suggesting. But if you're trying to trade in the direction of the trend, you may then step down to a shorter time frame chart, the one that you just had up there, and say, okay, let me try to find good entries in the direction of the trade. So right now, we're, when I was pulling this chart up earlier, we were in a rally on the intraday chart, but I might be waiting for a no-go on this time frame to get a decent entry into the larger trend that we're seeing. So if that if that was a relief rally last week, we know the weekly trend is a strong no-go. You could go down in time frame to a 60-minute or a 120-minute chart to look for those no-goes. So over the course of the last few weeks, you may only have been taking no-go moves because we know that the trends are lining up on the weekly and the no-go. So if we avoid the no-go, the, the go opportunities on the intraday chart, again, this is totally uh, different for each investor and we're just talking about somebody that's using that time frame. then you might be just looking for entries in the direction of the trend on the shorter time frame chart. And that does two things. It gives you good entry, hopefully, but it also, uh, reduces the number of trades that you take. If you are looking at your time frames and saying we're in a no-go trend on the weekly, we're in a no-go trend on the daily, we might be completely avoiding the goes on the intraday chart and looking for entries into the no-go trend uh, when we dive down into that time frame. So it, it reduces your number of trades. Uh, it hopefully increases your win percentage because you're trading in the direction of the trend and mm -hmm. it gives you good entry price as well. And so Alex and I work with a lot of wealth advisors and mutual fund portfolio managers, folks who are thinking very long term. So if we're looking at this S&P 500 weekly time frame, right? Here's the pandemic low coming out, uh, not the absolute low, uh, coming out July of 2020. This entire rally, right? Think about how scared we all were uh, after the COVID collapse. When the trend began, and we're talking about trying to be a patient investor, entering and staying with this long-term uptrend, right? This is the buy the dip rally, right? All through 2020, all through 2021, if we're talking about the, the large scale indexes, we wanted to buy every single one of these dips and ride this trend as long as we can. And up here, right? You don't catch the absolute top, uh, but you've retained the meat of the move. You've profited off the meat of the move. And right here at the beginning of 2022, they're gonna be moving uh, their clients into cash, into commodities, into alternative uncorrelated assets because the trend for large cap US equities is a no-go. 
And, and that's really the, you know, that underlying bias is, is going to help large portfolio managers allocate capital responsibly. And for you, it might be that shorter term time frame. Maybe the, maybe the longest time frame you're going to look at is a daily and you're trading 15 minute charts. That's great. But just think about that multiple time frame perspective. Now, the other question uh, that uh, the, you, the litmus test you want to put uh, every technical indicator through is, all right, so great. It works on a large index. But what about all the other asset classes? Is this, does any technical indicator work across all uh, investable securities? And the fact is that the work of John Murphy and others like Marcus Katsanos has really influenced our work to understand those correlations. And that even if you just trade equities, there's a ton of information in the bond market. That's, that's where our smart money is moving around and it has huge implications for what's gonna happen uh, within the sector groups of uh, large equity indexes. We also wanna understand what's happening in commodities and increasingly what's happening in cryptocurrencies. So Alex, why don't you take us around the world, round robin, daily go-no-go -go charts, just, just to consider the trend and the conditions of the markets overall. And, you know, more than ever before, we can be uh, invested in non-correlated assets through ETFs. Uh, so, you know, it's not the case anymore that you are limited as an individual investor, right? You can get exposure to these different asset classes uh, mm -hmm. through ETFs. So what we've done here is we've just thrown up a multi-chart multi layout. Um, and to give you a sense of, you know, look, you can get information about what's trending uh, all around the world or in different asset classes by looking at a indicator that blends the uh, weight of the evidence into a technical trend following approach. And, and very quickly going around from top left to, to bottom right, equity markets, we know we just talked about it in a week no-go. These are all daily charts. Treasury bond prices, remember bond prices move inverse to yields, are also in a week no-go. They've rallied a little bit over the last week or so. U.S. oil, strong go trend. If you've been following our research or if you've been uh, listening to the works of others, this year has been about the energy trade. So uh, energy, uh, oil, this is the USO, has been in a strong go trend since the beginning of the year, had a really long consolidation, but never got out of, uh, never went into no go bars, I should say, went to some amber there in the middle of the chart, but has now rallied back into strong go, go bars. Bitcoin is a weak no go. Bitcoin struggled heavily over the last few months. Uh, looks to have consolidated, looks to be trading in a range again, uh, but is a weak no-go. Gold also, likewise, a weak no-go. And the U.S. dollar uh, has been perhaps the surprise to many this year with its continued strength, corrected heavily, but has had a stronger day today. So a weak go for the dollar as well. Absolutely. So congratulations, everybody on the line. You made it to the 50 yard line. We're halfway through tonight's lecture. Uh, hopefully you've already learned a ton that you can implement in your training discipline beginning tomorrow morning, right? Simplify your process. Try that free uh, template from, uh, from Metastock to use the go-no-go -no -go trend indicator just to guide your trades. Help simplify your analysis uh, to make those trading decisions easier. Now, what I promised at the beginning of tonight's uh, webinar was that we we're gonna talk about trend, momentum, volume and volatility. And we're gonna talk about the complete suite of, uh, of Go No Go Charts tools that are available in Metastock uh, that give you that confirmation, the rest of the market internals uh, to really optimize what you're doing from a trend following perspective and give you that complete technical picture at a glance, keeping things really simple, uh, but putting a ton of math in the background. So we've already talked about the Go No Go trend that blends those objective foundational concepts of technical analysis, all of the information, all of the signal, none of the noise. Uh, coloring those bars to keep things simple. We're gonna talk about some really unique data visualization tools that are built into this just to, to keep things even easier and signal, uh, catch your attention. Uh, we're gonna talk about the go no -go oscillator. So this bottom panel is where we're gonna spend uh, the next few minutes. We're gonna talk about the concept of momentum, volume, and volatility. We'll talk about those icons and the go no -go squeeze. So Professor Cole, Let's teach everybody a little bit about the momentum concept. What do you mean about momentum? What is this? Yeah, momentum's so valuable. Um, it really, for me, measures the rate of change of price. And I always talk about it answering the question of how fast has price moved in any particular direction? So it's the velocity of price change. And if you can understand that, you can understand a lot about the strength of any move that you're seeing in price. I'm a car guy. Um, I think in terms of acceleration. So you can imagine 
Uh, if you've heard this analogy before, I'm sorry, but I love it. It really makes the most sense to me. Um, if a car is approaching a highway, it's going to increase its speed quickly. It's going to get faster and faster quickly. It might go from 10 to 20 to 30 to 40. And then as it's getting close to the highway speed, which around here is 50, it'll still get faster, but more slowly. So the rate of acceleration will decrease. You might go from 40 to 45 to 48 to 50. And then you hit that 50 miles an hour, you're on the highway. You hopefully don't break the speed limit. You drive at 50 miles an hour. And that's how I think of momentum. Even though price is going higher, it might be going higher less quickly. So that's that idea. You're getting close to the highway speed. Your car is going to keep getting faster, but not as quickly. And so it really, there's nothing left for it to do. It's going to flatten out. It's going to top out. And that's what we see with momentum. When momentum uh, dries up, price starts to struggle. And we can often look at momentum as a leading indicator for some sort of price reversal. Because if you think about the car again, what's going to happen eventually after you've topped out at 50, you're most likely to take an exit and slow down, right? So for me, that's how I think about momentum. And, and that's what it's telling us on a price chart, that as you see momentum wane, that higher high in price may start to top out and eventually reverse. Absolutely. Or if you drive like my wife, you, you enter the highway at 50 and then you get stuck behind a car and then you pass them at 80. So, uh, you know, momentum works both ways, right, Alex? <laughs> well, and yeah. yes, yeah. And that's why we all go to Germany and drive the Autobahn in the, in the summers. So uh, we're not going to we're not going to spend all evening talking about the multiple momentum concepts blended into the go no go oscillator. But uh, you understood that process from the beginning when we were going through go no go trend. You can build a complete checklist for what you're seeing from momentum using multiple indicators, but that creates many, many more panels on your chart. Compressing your price panel, you lose sight of the most important indicator of all. That's the price action. So we want all of this information, but we don't want it cluttering our chart. Therefore, we created the go no go oscillator. And that's this panel right at the bottom of the chart. And this green line that we see oscillating above and below the zero line. So Alex, let's talk first about just traditional momentum. You know, people might be familiar with something like an RSI. Uh, how do you use that to, to understand range bound markets? There's two things that you look for when you're looking at a momentum oscillator in the traditional sense. One is just finding those peaks and troughs where price has moved way too quickly in one direction. That's what I was talking about before, the velocity of price change. And those are the extremes of overbought and oversold. So with the go go oscillator, just like any other good momentum indicator, you can find those peaks and troughs and you see how they line up with the highs and lows in price. The other way or the other thing that you'll be looking for is divergence. You want to look at a derivative, a secondary indicator such as a momentum oscillator, and you want to see if it confirms or fails to confirm what you're seeing in price. If price is making a higher high, and the momentum is making a lower high, that's the car getting faster, but not getting faster as quickly as it was before. So that's the divergence that we're looking for, and that shows some uh, concern for what you're seeing in price. Um, and of course, with this oscillator also, we incorporated volume, because that's that important piece uh, that, again, is working in confirmation of what you're seeing in price. When you see the ribbon on the bottom of Metastock turning to bright blue, that's telling us that volume is heavier than it has been in its recent past. So you can use that in a traditional sense. You see divergence from an oscillator. You see the trend change. You see it break below zero. You see heavy volume. And now, again, you've got all the information you need to make the decision. So if we think about what we're trying to do, visualizing investor behavior. So we know there is a crowd that's buying this, uh, this chart. The price continues to go up. That's great. But what if we wanted to understand the nature of that crowd? Are they screaming, yelling, and clamoring for more? Is there still such feverish demand? Or from a momentum perspective, when we see this divergence, the momentum oscillator, the go-no-go -no -go oscillator makes a lower high at this new penultimate high in price that tells us that at these price levels, buyers are less interested, right? It's not going up as quickly. Same thing down here. We have a bearish, uh, excuse me, a bullish divergence, right? We're in a no-go trend. And it's very bullish to see that as price makes this ultimate low, we don't see the confirmation with a lower low in the go no go oscillator. Now, uh, for, for everybody who has seen this presentation before, we've talked about the importance of the zero line. 
Alex, you've done a ton of work on, obviously, uh, momentum oscillators being invented during a time when the markets were very range bound here in the US. Wells Wilder coming out with the RSI in the 1970s where you know our indices just topped and bottomed and topped and bottomed and they were stuck in this range for, for years. Very frustrating for fund managers. And so the oscillator, the momentum oscillator was there to identify peaks and troughs. So as soon as the market rallied to an overbought level, you could sell it. And when it uh, depressed to an oversold level, you could buy it. Uh, capitalizing off of that mean reversion. But what about when markets trend as they did through 2020 and 2021? We saw that massive, consistent, durable rally out of the COVID lows. How do you use momentum in trend? Yeah, it's one of the, the most uh, fascinating aspects of momentum analysis that I've encountered and studied over the last 15 years. And that's that you can indeed use them in trend. And you, what, what we found was with, through the work of Connie Brown and others was that momentum oscillators tend to trade in a range when a trend is in place. So if you think about a strong uptrend, and if you think about something like the RSI, which is the most used momentum indicator that we have, it will trade all the way up to overbought levels, 80-ish, and then it'll come back into neutral territory. But if the trend is strong, it won't go oversold, right? If you think about that, it makes sense. It, you'll have heavy and excessive buying in a strong trend. You have that market enthusiasm, but you shouldn't have excessive selling if the trend is strong and it's a bullish trend. So the momentum oscillators range from overbought to neutral, overbought to neutral. The problem with that that we all find is that they're very uh, fast moving and it becomes very subjective to find those ranges. People sort of try to find 80 and 40 as the range or 20 and 60 in a downtrend. But you get subjective. You start to say, okay, well, if it comes down to 42, does that count as a touch of support? Or what if it goes to 38? Is it broken uh, support and I should get out? Or is it close enough to 40 where uh, it's okay? So what we wanted to do with the oscillator for go, no go charts was created in a way that caused the indicator to go to zero when the inputs, remember this is a blended oscillator with many, many inputs from momentum uh, indicators that I've used. When all of those inputs are in their neutral territory, the oscillator goes to zero. So if you're in a strong go trend, all of the pullbacks, if this is a healthy trend, will it will uh, cause the oscillator to fall to the zero line where we can watch to see if we find support. If it finds support and bounces, we can say that momentum has come back in the direction of the, tr the trend and we can expect further price gains. And this goes back to your uh, talking about the expectancy formula at the beginning. What we want is to stay with winning trades and this is the bit that is uh, exciting or fascinating about the oscillator and the zero line. We get some clients that talk to, that send me uh, results every month. And they, you know, for the last couple of months, uh, I've had some emails from, from a client who's, you know, his win rate, 55 to 60%. That's, that's fantastic. But his, his most, his biggest win was 14% this month and his biggest loss was five. And his average wins are bigger than his average losses. So we all know that 55 to 60% win ratio is fantastic, but it's about staying with that one that went to 14, 15, 20%. That's where your, your outsized uh, gains come from. Now, uh, Alex is British uh, car guy through and through. When I first got to the CMT Association, Ralph Akampora took me aside and, and tried to teach me about momentum. And he's from the Bronx. Everybody of his vintage is, uh, you know, everything's baseball up there. He said, all right, Tyler, if you have a ball in your glove and you throw it up in the air, uh, it's going to leave your hand at its maximum speed, right? You throw that ball in the air and then as it reaches its apex, it slows down and then comes back to your glove and you toss it up again and comes back and you toss it again. So what we're talking about in a trend, momentum resurging, that's you tossing the ball back up and you catch it back in your glove and you toss it back up and you catch it in your glove or to use the the car traffic uh, or the the car met, um, metaphor you could say you run into heavy traffic and then it speeds up again and and whatever metaphor works for you the idea is you don't drop the ball you don't get to oversold if it hits the floor then the trend is likely really in trouble and so when we talked about pyramiding into positions when we talk about institutional investors scaling up their size and really being able to play with arrogance right in the bull durham quote you want to play with fear and arrogance you have to manage risk 
But when things are working, to get those really outsized gains, you want to find those points where you can add to your position or add leverage to your position. So what we've built into the tools are some really unique data visualization icons. First being those trend continuation. That's what Alex and I are talking about. The ball came back to the glove, it was caught and tossed up again. So if you're holding a position in here and you see more of these green circle icons, it means momentum is resurging in the direction of the trend, right? It takes the stairs on the way up, consolidates, resurges, consolidates, resurges. And at each of those points, maybe you didn't enter the trade back here, that's another opportunity to get involved, right? Because trends can be very durable over time, or you can scale up your position. The other set of icons, the counter trend correction arrows, are using the oscillator in its traditional sense of saying it was at an extreme of overbought and it's left that extreme, it's coming back down. So let's say you, you need to take some profits off the table. Your kid's getting married or going to the college, you need to take some money out of your stock portfolio and put it to other uses. Or you found another opportunity, right? So that's a controlled exit. You're not getting stopped out, but you want to think about those opportunities where it might be at a, a, a localized max price. So that's what those counter trend correction arrows are showing us. Now, uh, we can show you on some live charts. In reverse, we see the tool work the same way, that when the oscillator is negative and we're in a no-go trend, we're going to continue to see that zero line as resistance. So the oscillator keeps bouncing against that. We're going to get to those examples in just a minute. But Alex, let's talk about the last piece, right? The, yep. the volatility issue. Uh, is, is really bringing us a complete technical picture. And for that, you developed the go no -Go squeeze. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so in my role, I would need to talk to anybody about anything. And I wanted to be able to have a complete technical picture of any asset whenever I went out to talk to clients. And the bit that was missing was the volatility then. Once we've got trend, we've got momentum, we've got volume. I need to know what's happening in terms of volatility. And, and the fascinating part of volatility is actually reduced volatility in a lot of aspects, right? So when volatility is reduced, you, you've got a squeezing, you've got a shrinking, you think about the Bollinger Bands narrowing and then breaking out, or you think about a Keltner Band squeeze, or you think about a choose a toothpaste, you squeeze that, the top's gonna pop off, right? So when there's a, a tightening or reduced volatility, it often leads to a significant move in another direction. So what we've tried to highlight here with the climbing grid of this indicator is, for every bar that the oscillator remains at zero, meaning there is really sort of directionless momentum. There is no uh, overbought or oversold readings. We've got our in inputs to the oscillator staying in neutral territory, riding that zero line for an extended period of time. We're then gonna watch to see in which direction uh, the squeeze is broken. Now, this is the perfect visualization of that tug of war. For those of you who've seen Squid Game, uh, when the winning team pulls that rope, it's, uh, it's a real demise for the other side. But imagine, right, we're in a no-go trend, price is coming down, and the range of price action narrows, volatility dries up, we're at the zero line, there's no overbought or oversold, they're fighting for control of this trade. And when the bulls take over, right, when that tug of war ends, then as human beings, we all fall to the other side, right? Uh, the, the supply is dried up, uh, selling is over, and we're off to the races. Oftentimes, a break of the gonna go squeeze is a, uh, a really a catapult move. And so we look for those in, uh, in some really amazing screening tools that, uh, that we're gonna get to next. Uh, but really trying to visualize what we're seeing in the marketplace in terms of volume, right? Which maxed out, squeeze maxed out, the price range is compressed, all else being equal, we would assume that the trend continues to the downside. So when it doesn't, when it when momentum breaks above, that's our leading indicator, before we even enter a go trend, we know that there's upside momentum and positive, uh, uh, positive momentum on the go-no-go -no -go oscillator. So three simple things to give you a complete technical view of any security. The trend, the oscillator, and whether there's something important happening at the zero line. So let's go through some current charts, right? That's what we're all here for is uh, actual investing. Let's look at the real markets. Alex, walk us through this one. And, and for everybody who's on the line, you can type it into the chat uh, as you're watching. You can shout it out so your dog can hear you. Uh, what do you see? What, what trend are we in? Yeah, so right here, uh, this is on here because it's been the trade of the year. We're going to get through some other examples as well. But the oil trade has really been... Uh, since the beginning of the year, if you're if you're able to uh, to invest across assets like that, then if you were out of 
uh, equities because of the no-go and you were in oil, you'd have had a great year so far. So where are we right now? We're still in a strong go trend. It's the brightest blue bar. Uh, what's the, the oscillator doing? The oscillator is at four. So it's in positive territory, not yet overbought. And is there anything happening at the zero line? Well, not at the moment, but what we would say is that it has recently found support again, and that led to this recent rally back up to those prior highs uh, back from early March. All right, so let's look at play. Sorry, go ahead, Alex. Yeah, the trade's still in play in energy. Um, yep. This was, this was uh, one of the ideas we sent out to our subscribers this week because we're still finding these trades in the energy sector. That's the, the amazing thing is that these been popping up all year so far and you wonder is it extended is it overextended well this one went out um i think uh, about 10 days ago um and because we were seeing those go trend continuation icons again those green circles telling us that the oscillator had bounced off zero uh that momentum was back in the direction of the trend and it was sort of con uh, coinciding with retesting this support level um, from what had been previous resistance. So there's a whole nother uh, lecture about polarity that you could go into there, but it was previously resistance, now it's support. You're lining that up with go trend continuation icons and that's what we were looking at. And since then, it's moved up. Um, and so now we are still in a strong go on Occidental Energy. Um, we can say that the oscillator is, I think, at about two and that we are uh, recently finding support at the, os at the zero line. And so, I mean, again, the simplicity of this price panel, you can see how this important, and Alex just breezed right over it, the concept of polarity, right? When something was resistance, once it's broken through, then you retest to, uh, to find support. And that's exactly what's happened. But you can see those levels so clearly because there's nothing else clouding up the chart. And uh, I, I think that's a, uh, that's a great lesson. There are a lot of fundamental analysts talking about, you know, how overpriced uh, technology stocks were in 1998 and 97 and 96, and, and they missed the entire bull rally. And again, we're seeing that with a lot of analysts uh, talking about the energy space that, oh, that's that's over. Um, it, we, we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. If anybody thinks they do know, you should probably run the other direction. Uh, we just wanna react to what the market's telling us. And right now, those, uh, those oil companies are going higher. Um, Alex mentioned research. Uh, we do a lot for our uh, institutional clients. Uh, that's available to you as well. Every Monday morning, we have a long form newsletter that takes that top down approach to market analysis. So we're gonna start with the asset classes, work our way into the large indices, see if there's anything happening important in the bond market, and then the sector groups of, uh, of the S&P 500, and then down to individual securities um, to, to help understand what that framework is. And then on Saturdays, uh, we talked before about, you gotta step away from your uh, trading, you gotta clear your mind, and when in doubt, zoom out. So we look across all asset classes and global indices, uh, a, a big chart pack on Saturday morning, just to, just to get a sense of, of the trend. Um, so that's available on our site, uh, gonna go charts.com. Um, so let's take a few examples from research. Uh, this went out to May 23rd, uh, talking a little bit about Occidental Petroleum, which is that chart that we just looked at. Um, we also, in addition to those weekly pieces, do a daily note uh, that's you know a single security, a trade setup that's uh, really important to watch. So either the ending or beginning of a trade typically, uh, and some things that we screen for in terms of go-no-go -go methodology and the conditions that we wanna look for in terms of uh, really favorable setups putting those probabilities on your side. So uh, with that premium research, Alex, uh, you know, I know we've been talking about some of these tech stocks, uh, Snap, uh, seeing those no-go trend continuations. Remember we said the, the same tools can work to a trend in reverse on the downside. We see the same icons that tell us when we can scale into a, a short position. Uh, let's do this one together real quick, Alex. So what do you think, whoever's on the line, uh, what kind of trend is this in? This is a strong no-go. Um, and we, this is a, this was the note, the daily note that went out based on those no-go trend continuation icons that you see there. Um, you don't know it's going to gap down um, to that extent, but the trend is a no-go. It was in place. We're still in. Are you going to buy this right now? We're not buying this right now. We're still in a no-go trend. Strong purple bars, oscillator at five on this chart. Heavy volume, lots of market participation in this price movement down. Oscillator at negative five, absolutely. And I, I see yeah, you, right. Neil Shaw. 
Exxon Mobil, Devon Energy, Occidental Petroleum. Uh, I like where your head's at. Uh, those are those are all strong go trends uh, with continuations. And we can get to some live charts here at the end. But I think what we need to mention is that uh, for us, I mean, through the pandemic, family obligations, work-life balance, uh, it's been a challenge for everybody. And I'm sure it is for you too. Uh, and so your trading discipline cannot take uh, forever and it can't be so confusing. So one of the super cool tools that uh, that Metastock created was this expert commentary, right? So wouldn't it be great if Alex and I were just with you every time you pulled up a, a go, no go chart? That's actually what they built. So we can help you interpret exactly what you're seeing, what those icons and what those tools are showing you. You click on any bar and it's gonna tell you, uh, tell you what's going on, the trend conditions, what's happening in terms of icons, the oscillator, the zero line, uh, volume and volatility. Um, anything else you wanted to add about the expert commentary, Alex? No, nope, just I love it. It's just it gives you that quick one, two, three, four. What's happening on any chart at any time? It's great. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and then the other piece, because I cannot flip through five thousand charts every morning to decide uh, uh, where to place trades. We want to look at scanning and screening, and uh, Metastock has some of the best tools out there for doing this. Uh, Alex, I know this informs a lot of uh, your research ideas. Just uh, going through the scans. Yeah. I mean, like like you said, you know, you can't. We used to try. We used to try to just click through chart, chart after chart after chart. Um, but if you can say, for example, I just show me all the goes, all the new goes. Show me anything in a max squeeze. Uh, mm -hmm. Show me any icons. I want to find the go trend continuation. Let me see all the Russell two thousand and all the go trend continuation icon stocks. That's yep. just a time saver, like you wouldn't believe. Um, from Metastock, you can just open the chart right there. You can select one of the results and open the chart. Um, and and it's you know it's it's the next step and that's what we all need to to save time. Absolutely, we've got just a couple more examples and I see uh, some folks have thrown into the chat. This is great. We've got a lot of ticker symbols to go through. Uh, Cisco on a daily basis, uh, do it together. Where's where's our trend at? Those are some dark purple bars. We're in a strong no go condition. Uh, we've got uh, an oscillator at zero. And what does that mean, right? The beginnings of a squeeze as momentum is at the zero line, and that's where we're gonna to look to see if it gets rejected again. We'll see another continuation icon like these red circles here, uh, or perhaps we break to the upside. This strong volume uh, riding the zero line, you know, potentially that's the, the beginning of a bottoming process, but we don't predict the future. We react according to what the, uh, what the chart says. So we wait for confirmation and a trend signal for Cisco uh, to get back in. Uh, center point energy. Uh, let's do it together. Strong yeah, goes trend. Is, yeah, go ahead, Alex. Sorry, this was just one to throw in there just to say that you could be finding potential go opportunities, even though it seems like everything's going down or everything's been bad for the last few months. Uh, again, it's an energy company, but it's corrected, it consolidated, it went sideways, and now we've seen a new go trend, and we're in a strong go right now. Oscillator is, I think, at three or four, which is not yet overbought. Um, but it was just, you know, to throw one in there that had a little bit of blue at the end of the chart. <laughs> uh, what's the what's the uh, Jimmy Buffett song? Not the Warren Buffett song. The Jimmy Buffett song? Yeah. This is five o'clock yeah. somewhere? There's five a bull market somewhere. somewhere. There's That's a true. trend somewhere, yeah. Absolutely. There's a little trend somewhere. But yeah, I mean, if, uh, if, um, uh, if Jeff has a few minutes, we can certainly throw up Exxon or Devon or GDX, some of the tickers that have come through the chart real quick. I mean, that yeah, I'm ready. ready. Yeah, Excellent. let me do, let me go ahead and do the screen share here real quick. It's funny. I actually am going to turn, turn on my microphone or my camera real quick. I want to show you guys something. So you see some of the, the requests that are coming in. Mm -hmm. And I actually made a list of some of the stocks that I wanted to look at. And I wanted to show them to you because they match the ones that are in the list. You probably can't see yeah. this, so you'll have to take my word for it. Yeah, Oxy, okay. yeah. XOM. Yep. DVON, DVN. Yep. And then I've got these circled as the good stocks. MPC <laughs> and VLO. Yeah. And then Darren was asking for Tesla and Costco. And I've got yep. those in the list of not so good stocks right now. So yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. But anyway, yeah, let me <laughs> let me turn on my screen share. I think Darren is uh, is playing to the short side. Maybe a maybe a derivatives trader. <laughs> okay, let me here we go. You should be able to see my screen, and we're actually already looking at. Oh wait, wait, not yet. Exxon Mobil. So, I think we're looking at maybe a bigger view than we need to. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and then I'm going to scroll to the very back. 
So how's that look for you guys? We can't Perfect. see anything yet, Jeff. What'd you say, Alex? Uh, can you? I can't see Jeff's screen. Can you? I sure can. Uh, we've oh, got really? Exxon oh. Mobil. So all right, then this is, this is all you, Tyler, because I don't see anything. Uh -oh. All right. Uh, let me do this. I'll pause it and start it again. Um, and that should kind of help it maybe restart for you. Let me know if it doesn't. It might even be for you, Alex, if you've got uh, uh, the GoToWebinar screen minimized in any way. Oh, yeah. Good call. Maybe. Yeah, if you click on, um, like, maybe the right now screen. I just got bigger. OK. <laughs> don't, don't, wait, don't wait for me. Go through the charts. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Go ahead. Yeah. I guess. Uh, you, um, Alex, sometimes what happens to me is I'll get, like, a, a full screen picture of me, and that's it. And maybe you can minimize that. Um, and then turn off the webcam for a second. Uh, but what we're seeing on the chart is exactly what we've been talking about, right? The the oscillator. If we look here at uh, end of April, riding the zero line, max squeeze, right? It had dipped below. We were on amber bars. Looked like a real threat to the trend, and then we broke above zero as as uh, the trend had gone from weak form to strong form. So blue bars, uh, green circle icon. That trend is in place, and we saw a little retest of the zero line as that price consolidated, and then again a resurgence to the upside uh, with um, at heavy volume, uh, while the oscillator made uh, made its way up to five, so an overbought condition. That red arrow that you were pointing to, that's the that's the traditional use of the gonna go oscillator, where it was at an extreme overbought, came off of that, but certainly hasn't even crashed to zero. We're still seeing uh, positive momentum for ExxonMobil in that strong go trend. Let's do another one. Let's do, uh, we've, we've looked at a lot of energy companies. We already went through Oxy. Um, or Tesla or? Yeah. Yeah. OK. And then Alex is just going to have to trust that I'm doing this right. I'll just, or I could just tell you what I think it will say, because I know these charts like the back of my hand. <laughs> exactly. You sleep uh, in five colors, don't you? That you dream a good test for me right there. <laughs> All right, there's a good Tesla chart. Beautiful chart, I might have. So I think Tesla this is a, good... look a lot like the SPY, if you ask me. It, yeah, uh, I think this is a great case study for you know just how we would manage a trade, right? So if let's just say we entered in that go on the left side of the screen, uh, we want to stay with trends. We want to be patient investors. We also pay attention to the weight of the evidence. So as we got into uh, early April, uh, right there on the 11th, the go no go oscillator, which was at zero, broke to the downside. So remember when we said, if Ralph doesn't catch that baseball back in his glove and he drops it and it falls to the floor, that's that's oversold. That's enthusiastic selling in that go trend. So we know there's a real threat. Something's not right now. Price trends, right? Selling pressure doesn't, uh, you know, it's not the same as the price movement, but we can see that as a leading indicator. So for Alex and I, uh, you know, it's all about risk management and we might wait a few bars to see if price recovers, um, we, but we have not seen the oscillator recover. So we know that uh, when we move to that amber bar, like that would be enough for me to, to just be out of the position. And you basically end flat, up a, up a few percent, I guess, if you got out uh, um, at that amber bar. And then it strikes a no-go trend, right? Now the oscillator is below zero. We came up to test the zero line. And right? remember that polarity concept, what was support is now resistance. Tried to, uh, tried to break above zero on the oscillator, couldn't. Got a trend uh, continuation icon. Momentum's coming back to the downside. That red circle tells us this is a good chance, a good opportunity to short Tesla if that's uh, if that's part of your investment discipline. Right now, if we're looking at the far right side of the chart, um, potentially you cover your shorts here. We're in a weak no-go trend. The oscillator is at zero, building a squeeze. Um, and so then, if we see the confirmation of a continued no-go trend, if that oscillator is rejected at the zero line. Uh, prices got further to fall, and you've got more downside momentum. So there, you uh, amplify your short position if you wanted to. How's that? That's exactly uh, I, what I picture in my head. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's take a look at uh, at Costco or or GDX or uh, wherever you want to go next, Jeff. 
I'm not going to go to Costco. I, uh, as a stock, uh, right now, I don't think Costco is a good buy, to be really clear. But, but their hot um, dogs are great. Their hot dogs are awesome, and I like to do a lot of shopping there. So Yeah. <laughs> and when Costco gets in a good trend, it can stay in a good trend uh, for a yeah. while. So let's take a look at it. And I think, you know, as uh, as the economists, uh, you know, roll out of bed and tell us what we're in for in a recessionary economy, uh, you know, some of these consumer staples names or some of the discount retailers tend to do well. Uh, but we're just not seeing that in terms of the, the shares. Right. And we don't own the company. We own shares of the company. So we got to trade those. Uh, we're in a no go trend. It has weakened. Right. There's a, a rally from extreme oversold back to the zero line uh, on this recent price rally. Um, and like we said earlier, may, maybe your time frame is a 15 minute chart, in which case you are striking goes all the way up. Uh, but on a daily basis, uh, it's a series of lower highs and lower lows. And that relief rally, you know, it's guilty until proven otherwise. We're still in a weak no go. The oscillator is just at zero. It's building a squeeze. So I wouldn't be. Um, heavily shorting right here. You want to look for some confirmation of that. Uh, but we have seen a really sharp downward move uh, since uh, since the end of April. Uh, so that's that's a no go for Costco. All right. Should we do one for Tapan? He wanted to look at either GDX, EDV, or Shy. Yeah. yeah let's do GDX. GDX, you got it. Go sure, whichever. All right, here we go. Let me go ahead and zoom in a bit on this one. You know, it, it's funny if you look at uh, gold on like a monthly or quarterly basis. Go back. I mean, we were writing about this. A lot of the analysts that we work with were were talking to clients. You know, coming into an inflationary regime, everybody's thinking, "All right, gold to the moon." Right? That that does really well in an inflationary economy. It's a it's a safe haven asset uh, while bonds and stocks are highly correlated and both heading down. Um, and when you look at it on a really long term basis, we see, you know, that huge cup and handle, right? It's like this massive base, uh, but we're waiting for the, the breakout on the handle and it just hasn't materialized. Um, so this is the this is the daily basis. Uh, the Vanek uh, gold miners tends to be a little higher beta play than uh, than gold itself, bullion or, or physical. Um, but we're seeing so let's. Oh, are you switching uh, time frames? Got it. So we're back to the yeah, daily. Yeah, this goes right? back to daily. Yeah, I, I thought I, I heard you say I wanted to look at daily again. That's at least what I heard. <laughs> so I, I talk so fast, you know, the charts can barely keep up. So on a daily basis uh, for gold miners, uh, we're in a no go. It was stronger than it has been the last few days. Uh, you see that uh, weaker pink bars forming over uh, really the last two weeks. Um, Maybe you call that, you know, the look of a basing pattern. Well, uh, the oscillator is at zero and we're at a max squeeze. And I would just say it's at an inflection point. I, I wouldn't put a ton of money to work or place a huge bet uh, until we see the confirmation. So either that oscillator is going to break out above the zero line and then we're off to the races uh, for gold miners or it's going to it's going to roll over again. Right, all of this uh, tug of war at this price level for gold miners might resolve itself that the uh, sellers take control again, and then there's a lot further downside. So uh, right think, now, yeah, go ahead, Alex. Sorry, sorry to cut you off there, but I think that it goes back to what you were saying before about you know you can have the thesis you want to have, but you you shouldn't fight what you're seeing, and we've said this over the decades of technical analysis, whatever it is, don't fight the whatever it is, whether it was you know don't fight the Fed, don't you know. What you gold was going up in a go trend since what March, and people were saying this is that this is it. You know that we're in a recessionary period. People are going to flood into gold, and so you were in a go trend in gold from about March, I think, that went up quite nicely. But then it then it rolled over, uh, you know, in in April, and so you 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 don't fight that. It's a no go now, and it's been a no go since April. And it goes back to also the banks. If if anybody's interested in the bank stocks, the bank stocks was you know people were talking about how oh inflationary environment is going to be good for the banks. Well, it wasn't. The bank yeah. stocks really really struggled. But we could you could see it on if you're following a disciplined trend process that bank stocks were not the place to be um, yeah. for most of this year. And now the financial sector started to outperform a little bit versus the base index. But 
I think it goes back to what you're saying is, is that we don't predict, you don't know what's going to happen. And you can have a thesis, but be prepared to be flexible enough, you know, be disciplined, but be flexible enough to listen to the chart. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the best analysts uh, that we work for, work with, uh, they're, they're always planning for both scenarios, right? So gold miners here, uh, that oscillator breaks to the upside. What's your trading plan? Do you, do you load up? Do you, do you want to see it break above those prior highs? Do you take a shorter trade and, and ride it to what, what might be resistance at 41? Great. Like You develop your trading plan so that if you see the signal, momentum breaks positive, uh, we see that shift in trend, great. Uh, take that trade. Or right, the other alternative that might happen is that the oscillator doesn't break through the zero line. We see a resurgence of downside momentum, negative momentum, heavy selling pressure. In which case, what's your trading plan? Do you uh, do you load up on shorts? Do you uh, do you take the the inverse ETF? Um, but that's that's the scenario planning that you have to do as a trader to be disciplined. We don't forecast. We we might all have an opinion that you know bank stocks do well when rates rise because they're lending institutions and they make more money off the loans that they manage. But the way that the yield curve flattened, the way that interest rates rose, and the speed at which they rose. Uh, it was was tremendously uh, a tremendous headwind for the financial sector. Uh, if we wanted to pull up KRE regional banks or XLF, uh, the the S and P five hundred financial sector, um, you can just see that you know there's been some repair, some constructive uh, some moves, but um, you know still in a weak no go trend. On the uh, are we looking at Oops. XLF? This is this would be KRE. Okay, great. Uh, I can go to XLF if you prefer. No, no, no. So regional banks, right? They've uh, they've they've started to improve. We saw a break above zero on the oscillator. Uh, we've got this relief rally, um, and so obviously covering shorts, right? If you were short regional banks, uh, when that oscillator broke above zero, it tested one, two, three, the fourth time we build a squeeze, and then it breaks out. That's that's enough. The the downside momentum is really being challenged. Uh, but I would I would like to see a retest of the zero and a and a trend change, frankly, uh, to get in and see that resurgence of momentum in a go trend before I load it up on regional or municipal banks. All right, I, you guys have been very generous with your time, particularly. <laughs> uh, can we do one more? Sure. Leo would like to look at S A N M, which um, is uh, I don't the only thing I know about this S A N M. Okay is it's called Sanima Ordinary Shares. <laughs> Let's go ahead and open this up. I haven't looked at it before. Sanmina Corporation is an American electronics manufacturing service provider. San Jose. Oh, look at that. Alex, can you see this chart? You're, you're pulling it up elsewhere. OK. Yeah, I'm pulling it so, up. I can't see. Um, so but I, I got it elsewhere. I mean, the this longer term view, right? We we saw that massive rally in 2020, right? As all tech stocks did, growth equities generally performed very, very well. We had easy access to capital. Interest rates were at uh, lifetime, uh, unprecedented lows, right? We're at negative interest rates in Europe. Uh, so growth equities are very attractive to institutional investors in that environment. Now we've had rising rate environment and uh, San Mina Corporation, San Mina, uh, has really just been consolidating since uh, the start of 2021. This would not be a place that I'd want to park a lot of money. Uh, if you're a, a really good mean reversion trader, you could have uh, caught all of these up and down moves. That That's one way to play it. What we're seeing right now on the far right side of the chart, I believe, is a break to all-time highs. And the reason that's important, the reason all-time highs matter, uh, and on a closing basis, I think we're, I think we're just about there. We'll see. We'll see how the week ends. Uh, but this is a fascinating chart. Thank you, uh, Leo, because all-time highs mean there's no overhead supply. There's nothing to get in the way, right? And from from an investor psychology standpoint, or understanding the behavior of the crowds, there's nobody holding Senmina that wants to sell it. And we have retested just about this level, right? We've been bouncing around between 42 and 44 for two years, retesting uh, this 42 uh, level, 43 level over and over and over again. Every time it gets there, there's more sellers there ready to unload some Senmina Corporation stock. 
uh, you break out to all time highs. And those those the, prices those those prices are the same as the highs from 2017. So it goes oh. back five years. Uh, that level of resistance. Got it. Uh, so that would be significant. And I think to the other point, when when you've got a chart that's as choppy as that on a daily basis, that's when people go down in time frame and look for the look for like you said to find those swings. You know, look at an hourly chart, and and you can find the you know you've technical analysis is fractal so you you have trends within trends if you've got swings on a daily chart then you can you can ride those trends on a different time frame but yeah that's a very significant level go highs from 2017 were tested over and over and over again over the last two years and if we you know significantly break above those that might be something yeah you could also yeah i would look at uh, this on a weekly basis and if we close on a, a weekly closing price above those 2017 highs uh then i mean that's a that's a major breakout trade good eye leo that's right. a that's a cool chart and it's it's kind of at an inflection point you know we could continue bouncing around for a long time in here or this could be the start of uh, a, a big structural move to the upside very good I as Luis Yamada told us right we we want to buy the smiley faces we don't want to buy frowny faces and alan shaw her mentor uh said the bigger the base, the higher in space. So when you've got those multi-year consolidations, uh, that's a that's a big opportunity. By the smile. By the smile. Jeff, All right, I think this, cool. is, this has been a lot of fun for us. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you coming in. I'm going to answer another question. Tapan wanted to know a little bit earlier how it is it possible on how he wanted to know how to get access to the tool. So oh, this is a sure. new. Um, uh, so let me go ahead and kind of go into there. I do want to this uh, just kind of talk. I've got I'm ready to actually talk exactly about that. Tapan, um, the go no go trend includes like the trend identification. This is an add-on for MetaStock, so it does require MetaStock to run. If you're not familiar with MetaStock, MetaStock has been rated number one 27 years in a row now. Which I think is 28 years in a row. We left. I need to go do the math on it. Uh, it's like my age. But um, eight years in a row, it's been rated number one uh, in its price category. And this is an add-on to that software program. And um, Alex and Tyler have done a really good job of showing you exactly what's in there. But to reiterate, what we've got is we've got the go, no, go trend identification. You've got the momentum oscillator, the icons that give you the counter trend signals and the squeeze. And all of that, we've got the commentary, the explorations, the ability to run scans, all that has been built into the program and is ready to go. Um, and uh, we released this back in January. It's been a very, very popular product. Uh, we have um, just, I, I actually sent a copy of it over to uh, a, a reviewer over at Stocks and Commodities, Barbara Starr, if you're familiar with her. And she's going to release a review um, here in the, uh, I think it's in the June, but maybe the July issue of Stocks and Commodities magazine. It's a very, very positive review. She really liked it as well. So uh, it's going to give you uh, the commentary, the crystal clear definitions and explanations on every bar, trend identification, the icon alerts. You get the scanning. It's a fully built-in uh, uh, add-on to Metastock. Takes advantage of some of the tools. Normally, the uh, the ouch, the go no go complete toolkit is fourteen ninety five. What we're doing as a webinar special um, is we're going to release it to you and let you have it for $9.95. If you don't have Metastock and maybe today's the first time, maybe you stumbled across a YouTube video and you haven't purchased Metastock yet, we will give you a free trial of our Metastock real-time program as well as all the data you need to run it. Uh, we are uh, both uh, Tyler and Alex and me. We sat down and we did a boot camp training. I think it was about an hour and a half, two hours long to kind of show you and walk you through the tool as well as I kind of sat down after they were done and walked through how to run scanning and how to build lists and really just everything you needed uh, to know to get running with Go No Go successfully. So we're going to include that bootcamp training free of charge. We're going to give you a $500 discount. $9.95 is the price it'll be today. And we're also going to back it with a 30-day money-back guarantee, which we do with all of our products. But uh, generally, if you try this out, if it's helpful for you, it's going to pay for itself. Um, if, if it's not, you, it's a very good risk reward. If you like it, if it's helpful, if it helps you identify stocks and see them and see exactly what they're doing better, you can keep it. Uh, and you can, uh, so in any case, to take advantage of that, the money back guarantee, the meta stock trial, everything that's included in this package, you can give us a call at 800-882-3040. 
Um, if you have questions, if you want to look at other charts, um, we'll be happy to pull them for you. Uh, get in touch with one of our sales guys at metastock.com slash sales chat. And you can also order online at metastock.com slash go no go a. So I encourage you to try it. Like I said, it's been very, very successful. Uh, it's very, it's going to be highly reviewed here as soon as we get that article and that review ad in stocks and commodities. And it's been, um, it's been well received. So 800-882-3040, metastock.com slash sales chat or metastock.com slash go no go a. Um, Alex and Tyler, I want to say thank you for spending an hour with us today. Uh, one of the comments that I did say is earlier, you're like, it's like trading with me. If I would love to trade with you guys. I have so much fun yeah. when you guys come out and, uh, and do uh, do these demos. Um, uh, thank you for your time. For everybody thanks. in the audience, thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay well, and come to the next event. We'll see you there. Thanks, guys. That's great. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Kelly. See you soon.